I'm trolling a little bit with that title. Obviously, everyone agrees that CDs and MP3s have better audio quality than vinyl. That's not controversial. But there is a way in which vinyl is superior to CDs and MP3s, and it's why I still have a record collection. You see, with a CD, you just have one continuous track of ones and zeros. Those ones and zeros are encoded as divots in the CD. And you just play with the order of the ones and zeros to create different CDs. But with vinyl, you've got a bit more freedom. A record literally starts off as a blank slate, or at least a blank disc of plastic polyvinyl chloride or vinyl for short and you press patterns into it and you could press one continuous spiral into the record like with a CD or you could be a bit more creative and this is why I love vinyl. There's a rich history of people breaking with the conventional physical form of a vinyl record. Taking that blank slate and doing something different with it. Probably the most famous example is to do with the lock groove. The lock groove is the needle's final resting place. So you know how a record works. The needle of the record player rests inside the groove on the record and the record spins around. So the needle travels around the groove. The groove spirals in towards the center and the lock groove is at the end of that spiral. And I can illustrate how that works using this. This is a kind of toy book hybrid that we bought for our daughter. It's called the Wind Up Ladybird, presumably because the ladybird is really annoying, I don't know. And inside the book you've got these tracks um, and they spiral in towards the centre of the book, just like the grooves on a record. So the ladybird follows the track just like a needle following a groove. But look, you'll notice that the track loops around and touches itself, forming a closed loop. And so the ladybird just goes round and round and round in that final spot. And it's the same with the lock groove. And it's designed to protect the needle of the record because otherwise it might drift onto the sticker in the middle of the record and damage it. Traditionally, the lock groove is silent. There's no audio encoded onto it. It's just there to hold the needle. But famously on the Beatles album, Sgt. Pepper, there is some audio encoded on there. It's a kind of garbled loop of cacophonous sound. And so if you listen to the whole album and you leave it running, then that's what you're kind of drifting off to sleep to if, if that's what you've done. So it's a bit, I mean, it's kind of creepy actually. It's a bit of a mean thing to do to the listener if you, if you ask me. Um, I would play that sound for you, except that because it's the Beatles, it's a bit tricky. Um, like, I think this is almost certainly fair use, but uh, just copyright with Beatles stuff is really uh, a pain to deal with. So instead of that, I've got an album uh, called Evil by Sonic Youth. And side two has a lock groove with audio encoded into it. Okay. All right, now we're on the lock groove. So you can hear that repeating sound. I'm not sure if that's record scratch or something else. What's interesting is that the lock groove here is actually tucked up against the body of music instead of down here where you would normally find it. And there's a reason for that. And it's because record players often have a feature to, again, protect the needle, which is that if it gets too close to the center, the record player recognizes that you've reached the end and it will stop the record turning or lift the needle or in fact do both. So if you want someone to experience your cool lock groove, you have to keep it up here to stop the record player from terminating. I'll show you how that works. So uh, on the other side, you've got just a normal lock groove. So it's gonna travel towards the middle and it stops before it even gets there. The next record in the collection is Matching Tie and Handkerchief by Monty Python. The conceit is that you're buying a matching tie and handkerchief and the record comes as a free gift with that. Yeah, you see it says uh, free record, giveaway with the Monty Python matching tie and handkerchief. And 
Side two of matching tie and handkerchief is really interesting. If someone talks to you about the grooves in a record, you can smugly correct them and say, it's not grooves plural, it's grooves singular. It's one single groove that goes all the way around, except in the case of side two of the matching tie and handkerchief album, because it has two interwoven tracks and it doesn't say that anywhere on the packaging. They never talked about it in the advertising or anything like that. So if you were one of the first people to get hold of this record, it would have been very confusing because every time you put the needle down, it's just random which track you're going to get on that side. So let's see if we can make it work. Actually, it's, actually, it's surprisingly hard to find because, uh, well, both sides are side two. So <laughs> it makes it a little bit harder. But if you look at the etchings, um, I believe it's the there's a one of the codes has a B in it and that's the one. So some the background music. to history. Part background to history. Good background to history. Um, let's try again. It's total chance. So ah, background history. Ah. Okay, a sketch that starts. Good evening, Mother. Good evening, Mother. And then um, background history again. So there you go. Very confusing for the people who bought this record. Um, this one here has eight interwoven tracks, eight, and they all contain fake horse race commentary, naturally. So um, the idea is it's a game. So uh, you pick what you hope will be the winning horse before the needle drops, and then each one of the eight different tracks has a different winning horse. So you hope that the track that's chosen uh, is, is your horse. So. There's no way to know which track we're on, but there you go. Um, what's interesting with this is you'll notice how quickly the stylus is moving towards the center of the disc. And that's because every turn moves you forward eight grooves. So the whole thing only lasts a minute or two. It's basically a really tedious way of rolling a dice. My absolute favorite example of interwoven tracks actually comes from this. This is a toy from my childhood. It's a talking robot. So the idea is it's got all these cards in the back. You take one out and you put it in the front and there's questions on the card. So the question here is where do they live? And there's a picture of some pigs there and it will actually ask the question. That, that was genuinely, where do they live? I know it's not the clearest. Um, and then it's multiple choice. So do pigs live in a cot, a spaceship or a pigsty? It's a tough one. Um, obviously a spaceship. Let's try that. Try again. That was eh. Try again. It's odd. I tried pigsty. Okay, so it's, it's actually pigsty. Um, and so the way you're supposed to play with this toy is you're supposed to work through all the cards trying to get the questions right. Um, but that's not how I played with it. The way I played it was to try and figure out how it works. Like, how can this toy talk? Like, this predates the microchip. It's amazing. So I took it apart and, um, actually, I'm not going to take this apart because it's too precious. I don't want to break it. It's all right because uh, I, I got another one on eBay recently so I can show you the insides. And you've got all these levers and things that cause different buttons to be pressed on this voice box here. You've got these six different buttons and those different buttons choose which of the six tracks get played on a tiny vinyl record inside. So the toy is completely mechanical. The only electric thing really is the motor that spins the disc. And uh, even the speaker, it's just a cone attached to the pin, like a gramophone record. Really amazing. And uh, because I figured out how this worked, I was able to like 
make my own question cards to test my parents. And it wasn't easy questions like, where do pigs live? It was hard questions like, where have I hidden your keys? And because I've figured out the workings of it, I, I realized that you could, if you change the, um, the, the, you could rewire it so that it would speak backwards. So one thing that's really funny is that, that when it says, eh, try again, if you play that backwards, it sounds to me at least like it's saying, medic, <sighs> followed by the sound of gunfire. So I'm gonna see if I can get that to work for you. So uh, the first thing to do is play it forwards. I chose spaceship that time. That was weird, let me try it again. I'm not right, I'm not right. And you rip the battery out just before it finishes the loop, and then we should get it backwards when we switch the battery around. So that's my collection, by no means exhaustive. There's a link to a Wikipedia article in the description with a more complete list of examples of unusual grooves, like the record that plays from the inside out, with good reason. It's to do with the way that classical music tends to be arranged. So have a read of that article. One final thing before you go, our radio show has received a second series. The first two episodes have already aired and they're available on Catch Up, link in the description if you want to listen to those. Two more episodes to go live. They go out at 11 p.m. on Wednesdays on Radio 4, so have a listen to those. One of the episodes even includes a description of unusual grooves like I've shown you just now. So that's it, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit, hit subscribe and I'll see you next time.